Hello and welcome to Closely Observed English. Here is another piece of writing feedback and this time we're looking at C2 proficiency and an article. So let's take a look at the rubric over here. And we have to find the three content points that need to be addressed. A magazine is running a competition for the best article entitled I Was There. Those entering have to write an article describing a historical event as if they had been present at it. Write an article for this competition describing the event you have chosen and what your impressions would have been if you'd witnessed it. Okay, so uh, what are the three content points first of all? Well, you have to write an article describing an historical event as if, it, if you'd been present. Uh, describe the event. So it's slightly different because it's as if you were present and describing the event and what your impressions would have been if you'd witnessed it. I think those are the three. It's not entirely clear. I'm not sure if this is a rubric taken from an example Cambridge task, but I would say those are the three. Okay, so now we've seen that, let's take a look at the uh, candidate's response. I was there, the Great Plague of London, that's the title. Imagine going to bed knowing full well you may never witness a sunrise again. Alack, this is what the stark reality was for a good many people as the Black Death devastated our planet. Had it not been for that wretched ship dropping anchor at the Sicilian port, who knows how many would have lived to see themselves growing old. Alas, by and by havoc was wreaked from it, and the plague found its way to my hometown, London. Its arrival wasn't immediately palpable. The night before, a bright comet set the sky alight, and virtually everyone believed that was an omen for evil finding its way to it. Needless to say, such claims generally seem preposterous, but oh, did they turn out to be true. Having said this, what followed is history. However, there is a wrap-up of the events. Uh, here is a wrap-up of the events that ensued from my perspective. Within a week, thousands of people had met their demise, and the stench of death, and death per se, was being spread by rats all over the town. From my window, I could see those who'd crossed its path piled up on carts, and I'd lie if I said I wasn't getting shivers down my spine. As you'd uh, as you probably gather at this point, London was no place for the paint-hearted, careless and unwilling to precariously dice with death, since the menacing disease was seemingly set to devour every last living thing. Eventually, a huge fire swept through most of the town. Now, you must think this would just make things worse, and you'd be right. Nevertheless, it actually put an end to the plague, as it exterminated many of the rodents responsible for the baneful perpetuation. By a fortunate stroke of serendipity, not only did I survive the disease, but also the inferno. Phew. To cut it short, next time humanity is faced with such a quagmire, just make do and stay at home like I did. Discretion is the better part of valour. Okay, so first of all, let's take a look at our content mark for this piece. Um, let start at three. Minor irrelevances and or omissions may be present. Target reader is on the whole informed. Well, let's go through the content points. It describes the historical event as if they'd been present, pretty much. Um, describes the event. Um, yeah, I would say so. There are elements of um, event description going on just here. And impressions come through pretty clear. Uh, seems like a witness's standpoint. So I'd say it's definitely more than the three. All content is relevant to the task and the target reader is fully informed. Yes, I, I don't see why not really. Okay, so communicative achievement. Uh, for a three, we want users the conventions of the communicative task with sufficient flexibility. So let's start there. Um, there's a good title, write your article. The title is useful here. I don't think titles are a necessity in articles, but here I think it really is. I could imagine somebody getting a paragraph or two into their text and then realizing that they hadn't actually um, named the event that they were describing. That sort of thing could happen. So I think having this title works very well. So that's a good use of the convention with flexibility. So that's good. Um, it starts with a very nice sentence here. Imagine going to bed knowing full well you may never witness a sunrise again. Hmm, that's good. It's a good way to draw the reader's attention to what's about to happen. So that's good. Um, what else have we got? Um, there's a good kind of development of ideas. We've got the background. Uh, we know what we're talking about at the start. So then, let me just put this down a little bit. So. Um, 
we have a development of ideas, starting with the introduction, going through to the background just before the event, then um, a summary of some of the things in the event, then the conclusion to the event. So I think that's good because it tells a story. This is an article that tells a story. So I think that uh, sufficient flexibility of the conventions, that's good as well. Uh, it certainly holds the target reader's attention. Um, so that's really good. Um, there are a few places that generate a little bit of, not exactly confusion, but they could be a little bit easier on the eye, let's say, or at least uh, could help you follow the train of thought a bit better. Uh, for example, coming into the second paragraph, its arrival wasn't immediately palpable. Okay. Uh, that's kind of contradicted by what followed, which is literally just the night before, there was this omen that turned out to be true. So this would need explanation. What do you mean its arrival wasn't immediately palpable? Was it that a week passed after the arrival of this boat? In which case, um, it's quite interesting to think that somebody would trace it back to that boat at the time, back in the 17th century, but oh well. Um, Having said this, what followed is history. Again, if we want the uh, description of the historical event, you don't really need to say what followed is history, especially if you had witnessed it. There wasn't a lot of writing of history going around then. I know there was Samuel Pepys, and I know that we're talking about real world information here that doesn't necessarily have to apply here. Okay. Um, so what, what does that lead to then here? I would say that communicative achievement earns a four because it's, it's good. It is very good. I, I really enjoyed reading this text. So let's take a look at the organization. Uh, text is a well-organized coherent whole using a variety of cohesive devices and organizational patterns with flexibility. It's certainly that, isn't it? If we go through, we've got some good long sentences that are well managed. We have different sentence structures. I like the uh, use of the imperative here, imagine. Um, I like, uh, well, this is, the good, is a good link back. I think a lack doesn't really work just here, especially as you've got alas just here, alas does. So that's, that works better. Um, we have a nice bit of inversion here, had it not been. Who knows? That's very good. The night before, a bright comet set the sky alight. Yes, that's an, another very nice long sentence. Um, needless to say, such claims generally seem preposterous. Yeah, that's good. Um, having said this, what followed is history. However, here is a wrap up of the events that ensued from my perspective. Uh huh. Yeah, okay. I mean, if we wanted to be really difficult, I know this is an organization, but talking about a wrap up of the events, that's probably not language that would have been used by Samuel Pepys. Oh, well. Um, I like, yeah, the sentences show nice variations. Uh, from my window, I could see. Instead of I could see things from my window, we've got from my window, I could see. I like that. Um, as you'd probably gather at this point, London was no place, blah, blah, blah. That's good. Eventually, that's a nice linking word to show, well, to speed up the narrative. That's good. Um, and then a nice sentence to cap it off. Discretion is the better part of valor. Nice uh, idiomatic expression. So where does that bring us with the organization? Uh, well, it's structured well. It is structured well. There are a couple of... Um, areas where there could have been slight changes like uh, balancing this alack against alas, we don't need everything. Um, balancing, um, having said this, what followed is history, getting rid of that maybe. I'm not sure if that's just organization or if it's communicative achievements as well. I'm gonna go for a four moving up. There are lots of really, really good things about this text. And then that brings us to language. We start with uh, vocabulary. I'm going to highlight the pieces of vocabulary that I think were um, unnecessary choices. And I'll, I'll tell you a little bit about why. Um, 
I'll start with that and then I'll go back through. A lack I've already talked about. Um, I think that was it for the first paragraph. Palpable in the next one, I wouldn't say really works because it's not explained. Okay. Um, wrap up sticks out like a sore thumb. Death per se just here doesn't quite work. The way we tend to use um, per se is um, to talk about the fundamental thing and then to talk about the specific thing. So for example, um, I'm not against tests per se, but when my students complain that uh, the questions were far too specific, I start to wonder what the value is. Yeah, so I'm talking about per se is the general thing, but then I take the specific out of it. Um, London was no place for the faint hearted, careless and unwilling to precariously dice with death. If you dice with death, your position is precarious. How do you do that? Dicing with death precariously. Precariously is unnecessary here. It doesn't add any meaning. Um, really? So yeah, I don't think that was, that was necessary. Um, and then here, um, exterminated many of the res rodents responsible for the baneful perpetuation. I think there would have been clearer words to choose here. Perpetuation means carrying something on. Perpetuation of the disease, do you mean? I'm not entirely sure what you mean. Uh, it's not just carrying on the disease, it's spreading the disease, isn't it? So perpetuation, maybe not. Baneful, you could argue for, maybe. And then uh, next time humanity is faced with such a quagmire. I wouldn't describe the plague as a quagmire. Um, the the stinking bodies of the dead and trying to get through that. You could call that something like a quagmire, but here, uh, maybe not. But now I want to go back through and I'm just going to highlight what I think were good pieces of um, vocabulary choice. Um, I like this, never witness a sunrise again. That's great. Stark reality works well. Uh, devastated our planet. Yes, I think so. Wretched ship dropping anchor very nice to see themselves growing old very good havoc was wreaked yes um a bright comet set the sky alight have you noticed something not only are the words themselves well chosen but they work so well in conjunction with the other words around them we have lovely collocations a comet set the sky alight not set the sky bright or something like that, or made the sky alight, but set the sky alight. They commonly go together, set and alight when we talk about the sky. So it really works. It kind of doubles up on how well it works. Um, I like this preposterous, that's a good use of the word. Um, events that ensued, that's good met their demise the stench of death yeah i could see those who'd crossed its path piled up on carts wow i'd like this i'd lie if i said i'd lie i think we'd probably be saying here in the continuous i would be lying but it's not bad it's okay as you'd probably gather i like that yes um, seemingly set to devour. I like that as well. A huge fire swept through most of the town. Good. Um, it put an end to the plague. Again, great collocation. As it exterminated many of the rodents responsible. Yes. By a fortunate stroke of serendipity. Like that. Very good. Um, yes, there we go. So yeah, again, uh, just just take a look at that, uh, the way that I've colored things in. I've not really highlighted very many individual words here. Most of the good language I've highlighted, especially from the uh, perspective of the vocabulary, most of that good language has been connected with longer utterances, compound expressions, collocations. That's what really works. And it's mostly single words 
when not chosen right it's because they're not chosen to fit the context or the language pattern around there we go that tells us something so i would say that it's almost all effective for the vocabulary the grammar is very well managed i like that i didn't really see much that was wrong there and there were hardly any errors so we're looking very close to a five i'm going to go for a four plus mostly because i i lack my own i lack the self-confidence to go grading a five for the language it seems so freighted with meaning doesn't it say it's a five for language at c2 level it's like saying that it's perfect and i know that it can't really be perfect in the exam so forgive me for for hedging my bets a little bit and saying four going towards five instead of just a five if you want to argue in the com comments that you think this is worth a five for the language, then I'm not going to really have much of a fight against that, to be honest. <laughs> so to conclude, then, this is a wonderful article. I really enjoyed it. Uh, it shows that the person who is writing this has a great command of the English language. It also shows that they have a really active imagination. And I would recommend that this student, you know, when they're not so focused on exam preparation, I think that they should have a look at some uh, writing prompts for submissions to journals and, you know, small publishers and things like that. I think that they would have a really good shot at getting their uh, work published. If it was of this quality, uh, longer, I'd say get it up to about a thousand words maybe and maybe not about the Great Plague of London, but if they could produce this sort of quality um, in a longer text, they wouldn't need to think about just the exam. They could think about real world um, writing. I think that is fantastic. It's really, really good. Get more voices out there. So um, if you enjoyed this video, please think about liking the video and subscribing to the channel. Um, all of this really helps make my videos more visible in the wider community on YouTube. But generally, thank you for watching. See you next time.